We are on day 3 of New World's expansion and a lot of you are probably level 65 and some of you might be wondering what to do next. So that's what we're going to talk about and that's what I'm going to show you. Quick shout out to my Patreons if you want to support the channel then that truly is the best way. You can always come and follow me over on Twitch, I'm streaming every day at the minute. Had a lovely 12 hour stream today, come and get your drops. Okay, you're level 60, what do you do next? For me, there's two main ways of getting your gearing. Now if you want perfect bis, then you probably are already ahead of me, you probably already have your, uh, you know, your Azop Inductor, your Chromatic Seals, and all of your named items ready to go. However, for most people, there's two main things you should do. One of them is very simple. Run the expeditions. All the normal expeditions that have like a recommended level of 65 or 60, like Tempest Heart, the new Savage Divide, which weirdly I've not unlocked even though I have done, Lazarus, Genesis, all of these expeditions are currently giving now it's a little bit weird, they're supposed to give up to gear score 685. To my best knowledge, they're actually giving gear score 700. So you don't get like loads of that kind of high level stuff because the, the window's quite high. But you can literally just do any of the normal story based dungeons and get good gear. And the normal version of these dungeons are very, very easy because they are effectively now referred to as story mode and they are actually very easy to do. So regular Empyrean Forge, for example, very easy to do. You're going to cakewalk it. It's not going to be much of a challenge, but you will actually get like some good gear and even if this gets fixed and they take it from having gear score 700 stuff to just 685 it's still a good way to get progression if you just hit level 65 and you're in like 650 gear score or even a little bit lower because you really don't need it you can probably do it in 625 or even less so you can do dungeons that's an absolute classic way if you don't want to do dungeons maybe you've got a bit of anxiety even though the story modes are really really simple the alternative are chest runs now all of the old chest runs are back you might as you can do them all now if you're not familiar what a chest run is basically there are these elite areas on the map so for example in the new zone the isle of zervan is an elite zone where it says it recommends five players and you need to be level 65 that's one example but for example if we go into brimstone sands there's another one here the uh, cast drum for example you might see this is cast same thing it recommends level 65 and it recommends five players there's several of these areas about the map and what you do There'll probably be people in the chat, I don't know if there is right now. Um, this guy says Merc, which basically is short for Meerkad, right? So that's in the chat, and let me show you where that one is. That's up here in Shattered Mountain. This area here is called Meerkad. I actually know, oh, I was going to say I don't know where it says that, but it says it right there. And what's going to happen is, they're all going to ascend somewhere and gather up, probably around here for this one. And they're going to run through that zone and do the chests, pick up the elite chests. And you know what? You get gear score up until 700. Just to very quickly go through where the common ones are, just in case you literally don't know. Meek or Meerkad is there in Shattered Mountain. Mines is here in Shattered Mountain. In Brimstone Stands, you have Helio or Heliopolis, which is right here, just outside Brimstone. You've got Castrum, where I said earlier. The Wall is the Wall of Netbet, which is right over here in Brimstone Sands. There's a couple of other ones that the beds of um, a bit yet. There's the Imperial Palace, which is right down here in Ebonscale. There's Sirens in Meekwater, where you gather around about here. And then they've added two new ones, which is what I talk about, the Isle of Zervan. And then there's one here, which is the, well, I think we'll probably end up calling it Dredge Landing, where you would gather here. Chest runs, I mean, they're not hard. They're very easy content, but you do get gear. You can only loot the elite chest once per day. If you're literally stuck, go ahead and do that. Didn't mean to turn this into sort of like a chest run guide, but there you have it. And I'll actually stay on the map uh, right next one for the next one. And they are basically portal runs. Now, portal runs are a way of apparently getting good gear. The one problem with them right now is that a lot of the major portals are simply being farmed because of the artifacts that are in there. And I'm going to talk about artifacts in a minute. So portals are going quite quickly. If you can get in a portal train, it's sort of like a chess run, but instead of it being chess, you all get in a big group and you go and close the corrupted breaches. They're slightly different depending on what it is, but normally it's just kill the mobs, press E, it all dies and you get the goods. So for me, those are sort of like the three main ways of getting you the start of your gear. Chest runs, normal dungeons, portal runs. And what you'll get doing that is you're going to end up with a lot of different gear. By the way, one thing a lot of people don't even realize is you pick this here, this gear score button. You can literally sort it by gear score. You are aiming for the highest gear score. But obviously you're aiming for perks that are vaguely relevant. Now, I haven't really looked at the perks. I've just gone for, at this point, highest gear score. Some of this literally doesn't make any sense. Like this one, the fire harnessing, 
I'm not a fire mage. It doesn't make any sense to me. However, it is the highest gear score that I've had that is a heavy glove. Now, we haven't spoke about loot biasing, but loot biasing is important. When you do the chest runs, the portal runs, or even the dungeons, you want to sort of be wearing gear that you want to get new gear of. So if you want mage gear, you should wear mage items. And if you want to play like a heavy boy tank, then you need to be wearing the heavy boy tank stuff. It's a little bit of a problem for doing a dungeon because obviously you need to fit your role. But for a chest run, you can wear whatever you like. So you're going to get a lot of gear. Just pick whichever gear you know you're happy with it. It's as simple as that, right? Don't forget you've got gear slots if you want to do different builds. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Some of this does depend on who you are. If you are a PvP at heart and you want to do nothing but PvP, you can go ahead and do that. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it first, and we'll come on to why in a moment. But if you want to do it, you can do it. You can do Outpost Rush and you get your caches as normal. The boxes do contain a wide variety of gear score though. Sadly, I don't have a box to show you. I think generally you get about three items in there. And then if you want to do an arena, the matches are obviously quicker. And you get basically one item from the box. You can go ahead and do that. Now, I'm assuming that when you pick level 65, you are gear score 650. Because if you've done the MSQ, that's about where they said you would be. Now, I didn't actually level up that way. I leveled by doing most of my refining and some crafting professions. So that meant I was basically level 65 and still gear score 625. Now, my point is, if you are going to do the PvP modes and you've just leveled up like that and you're like gear score 625, you are going to get upscaled to 675. So it's not the end of the world. You'll be behind, but not crazily. So it is something you can do even in your old gear, or if you have your new gear, you'll have 650 stuff from the MSQ. So it's viable, definitely viable. And of course, as you do that, you will progress on your PvP reward track. Now, sadly, I've not got one to show you here, but you obviously get items. I got a 680 before. You get the artifacts as well that are on here. Yeah, decent way of doing it. However, I wouldn't actually recommend that this is how you start off, even as a pure PvPer, just simply because it's a bit slow. So let's say you're in sort of my sort of situation, but maybe you were gear score 680, something like that. You're wondering what to do next. Well, before that, you have mutations. Now, the two dungeons that are currently mutated are the, the new one, the Savage Divide, which I don't have access to, and the Imperium Forge. Now, what I want to show you very quickly, if I can click this, is basically the M1 of this dungeon is effectively what used to be regular it's quite easy for most people it's you know if you're a casual and you're struggling with um, you were struggling with it then maybe you just want to do the story mode no ill will or insult from my part but the intermediate ones not too hard you need gear score 650 for this kind of stuff which you should probably have already you could maybe do that instead of doing regular but i'd just warm up with regular first you might as well then an m2 is getting uh, a little bit harder probably a little bit tricky you need to be gear score 675 for that m3s i don't think people are really doing this until they get the good gear which most people aren't doing right now so you can of course pretty much concentrate on dungeons they will give you better gear and to be fair the corrupted portals they're just good all the way through and also chest runs like there's no reason to stop doing chest runs or portals or even really normal dungeons when they've not fixed it you can just do the normal dungeon you can do all of those three and just keep pumping that and you'll start getting gear or the mutation sort of like when you want to step up a notch now during your time you will find gear that are basically named items so for example if i look at this named item here the commanding strike now they don't have to be legendary by default they can start off as a purple named item for example like this one trick shot and you can upgrade these you can basically make them gear score 700 and you can change the third perk and you do this at a gypsum kiln now the problem here is amazon have made this very hard to do and i don't really agree with it and i don't think it's sensible unless you know that you're trying to get a best in slot item and this video is sort of more aimed at your average player rather than your hardcore player so you're probably not going to know what best in slot is right now because most people don't you can come to the gypsum kiln like this and all you want to do is scroll all the way down now you'll start seeing a lot of named items the, these are the material ones because they've put these here but if you keep going down you'll start seeing eventually named items and you can see finally i see trick shot right there now you need a variety of different things to craft this you need obviously the item now in theory i believe you're only supposed to be able to upgrade items that are 650 and above in practice you can 
that's just not the case some items can be some items can't be i think this is a little bit buggy right now maybe not exactly perfect but let's just presume your item is here also you should not be wearing it and it shouldn't be in a gear set because otherwise that will sometimes just not show here but you need a variety of different things to craft this obviously you need the original item itself you need some dark matter dark matter is coming from a variety of different sources outpost rush salvaging items all, all kinds of places basically you need the gypsum orb relatively easy to get you need the weapon matrix which are, they're not easy to get but they're not insanely expensive at the minute they're probably i mean they're expensive maybe like 5 to 15k it's really hard to say they do require a lot of mats but the mats have been decreased so i don't really know the exact value of this but probably worth it the main problem is that amazon have added three chromatic seals to this craft and honestly i think that makes it completely not worth doing unless you are crafting this or as AGS would say, BIS. However, I think that that is BS. So the chromatic seal comes from your faction vendor. Now, a lot of people are having a couple of different problems with the faction vendor and it's twofold. Some people are legitimately bugged. It is simply just not working for them and it's on the known list of issues by Amazon, which we'll take a look at in a second. Other people aren't realizing that you need to get the reputation before you do the quest. Now it'll show you like the quest on the map before you have the reputation. But the way to tell that if it's working or not for you at the start is what you'll have is you'll have your rank here and then they'll say a number that is required to get to the next rank if you hand in any of the quests with the reputation or anything like that if you hand in any quest and the number does not change then you are obviously bugged if the number does change then you can continue to proceed it's going to be a small number the bar's not going to change and you're probably going to be capped at tokens when you do it so look at that number if that moves you're all good once you fill that out you have to do a quest the quest not too hard but then you unlock the new stuff and the issue that i was talking about with the chromatic seals is simply the cost and the rate at which you can buy them you can only buy these once per day and it costs you 20,000 tokens and 5,000 gold. So to upgrade a named item is a minimum of 15,000 gold plus all the extra stuff. Now I believe in the patch notes it said it only required one. I think three is an insane number unless you're literally trying to craft best in slot i don't believe in this method at all i don't think you should do it anymore i think it's too expensive for most people once you know what's bis and if you've got a named item that can be then converted into bis with the fact that i didn't mention early but you can actually change the third perk as well with the craft mod yeah they're possibly going to be some that are worth it because it's literally best in slot however unless you know that don't do that now at the same gypsum kiln you can also upgrade artifacts now we're not really going to talk too much about artifacts actually that's a lie we're going to talk a bit about artifacts but artifacts here they can also have the last perk changed and you can add the last perk it's literally part of the thing that you do this however only requires one chromatic seal so one thing i would recommend is get your faction rep up and maybe start buying the chromatic seals if you think you're going to use them or if you really think you're going to craft your own best in slot maybe do the azov inductor i'm not going to explain what that is here right now however artifacts we've not really spoke about that that's something you're going to want to farm so if i show you my gear i've got a variety of different ones i've got this featherweight on me right now i've got the wizard hat i've got a base i've got you know i've got quite a few some of them are actually in my gear sets as well like i actually don't know where it but i've got odo now if you don't know you can have one artifact in your armor one in your weapons and one in your jewelry i'll try and leave a link to where to farm them you can obviously just use new world database they're, they're all on there but there's a couple i really want to point out because they're sort of time sensitive and something you want to do if available for example the spear comes from the scorpy boy here now this only spawns once at night so every time it's going to go into the night time which i think once every 90 minutes you can go and kill it so you're sort of a little bit limited there there is one in the mutated version of the empyrean forge normal dungeons do not drop artifacts as of the expansion patch notes that might change but it only drops in it only drops in uh, mutated dungeons there isn't one in the savage divide but there is in the empyrean forge it is the fire staff that scales our strength i've been farming it today haven't got it but that's time sensitive because once that becomes not mutated you're not going to be able to get it not until it goes mutated in maybe like four weeks time there's some on the pvp reward track but they're not really time gated and then there's some from open world bosses which they're not strictly time gated but what's going to happen is people are going to farm them quickly and soon and then they're going to sort of tail off 
So there's a bit of pressure to do it. As this isn't really an artifact guide, but the featherweight one comes from basically a boss that's around about here in some sort of mushroom. Sorry, actually, it's a fungal ridge. There's like a mushroom where you want to go. People are farming that because it's bugged, though, which are just instant spawning. And there's also Odo, which is the flail, which comes from a boss in one of the elite areas here. One of the sort of chest run areas is like, a, I think it's a kitty cat boss. People are farming that one as well. There is a musket, which is from right here in this uh, area here, which I don't know, it's called the L. Eldrist Psychor. Can't remember the name of the mobs, by the way, but he literally drops right there. He literally starts there. There's some from the MSQ. There's some from just doing like chests in this zone. In this zone, and there's one that is currently available here. I can't remember exactly where it is, but there's some like ledge with two chests on it. That's where the void gauntlet drops. Now, in theory. There's supposed to be a rapier one that's dropping up here, but that boss on my server, and I think on most servers, is not spawning. But I would definitely try and do the open world ones as quickly as possible, just because they're going to get harder and harder to farm as people get them. Once you've got your artifacts, you can indeed go ahead and do like quests with them. So for example, if I put the abyss on, when I put this on, oh, it's actually not shown here, but when I do put this on and I go into artifacts, there's different quests that you need to do to sort of level them up. Now, actually, this is a perfect example example you can only do five at a time and i don't really know how you pick the order it's a little bit weird and um, yeah you can only do five at the time but you do various quests and then that unlocks the perk that brings me to back to the gypsum kiln because to unlock that last perk and to complete all the quests this is where you then upgrade them and you get that last perk but you actually pick that perk so you need to have the craft mod that's the same for the named items by the way you actually pick that last perk and you can change it at will so once you've done this once i'm pretty sure you can do it twice like once you've picked a perk I'm pretty sure you can change the perk but farming artifacts doing the quests <laughs> that's something you might as well do now especially if you want to collect them all obviously you can just get the artifacts that you want and i spoke about major corruption breaches there's two from major corruption runs so this is why a lot of them are not lasting long you can see a lot of these are getting done quite quickly you get the abyss which is a great axe that scales off int and you get the wizard hat which i can't remember what it does one thing that is interesting that sort of is all over this in a way is crafting now, i spoke about the chromatic seals if you have a chromatic seal and a normal golden scarab as well as the timeless shards you can do chromatic crafts and if you have the azoth inductor you can do an azoth inductor craft but you also need to have a prismatic scarab for that the Azoth Inductor is you pick all three perks and you get guaranteed Gear Score 700. The Chromatic Seal is that you pick two perks but you get guaranteed 700 so there's a random third perk. So if I came here I had my Mithril Boots I wanted to have craft this as like uh, Gear Score 700. If I had all the Prismatics which I do actually I just have them in some different storage because I've been doing some crafting. You still need the Time of Shards, you need one Golden Scarab, you need the Chromatic Seal, you need all the Prismatics, you pick two perks, you probably dump in the Azoth because why the hell not you have all your trophies you have your gear you have all the normal crafting stuff you will get gear score 700 you will pick two perks and you will get a randomized third but it's probably going to be refreshing or health and i think this is now the best way of getting gear you can sort of forget the named items unless you're getting some sort of like specific base this is going to be a good way of getting gear score 700 for a build that you vaguely want the prismatic mats are not that expensive right now so this is something where i think most people will go if you want perfect perfect bits and you have a lot of prismatic then do feel free to use the ads off inductor it's the same kind of thing basically except you pick three perks so i do think this is where people are going to go and i never really spoke about gathering there's a lot of new mats to gather you can gather mithril you can gather all kinds of stuff room wood etc there's a couple of good places around you can get mithril pretty much all over the zone a lot of the new stuff does come from the elite zones you can get it there but there's areas for example in uh, in morningdale where you can get some good areas of spin fiber and mithril and that kind of thing dark hide i think is dropping from mobs that are over i think 63 and above but there's some good areas in the new zone obviously where that contains but those level mobs actually do exist in brimstone if you want to do it there farming the new mats perfectly reasonable nothing crazy about that if that's something you want to do there's all other kinds of content obviously you can do the horse races if i'm honest some of the horse races are a bit long some of them are literally like 20 minutes long and they're not repeatable even though we sort of thought they would be repeatable because andrew was like the second time you do it will be better and then that's not true because you can't actually do it a second time so a little bit confusing there 
But yeah, overall, I think that's mostly what you want to do. I do want to draw your attention to, to some of the known issues. I know some of you are going to get to this point, or maybe you're not even going to get to this point. You're just going to comment that you can't do X, Y, and Z. Let me show you something. I've got to tell you that that is very bright on my screen, but there are some known issues that you really need to know about. For example, right now, the season pass just has been effectively disabled. A lot of stuff is going on with it. I'm not going to talk about it. Like They just obviously need to fix it. Some main store requests are simply not working. Some of the faction stuff that I spoke about is also a known issue. So if you're struggling with that, you know, that's a problem. Some people can't get to the Brimstone MSQ, which means they can't get heart runes. There's like a lot of stuff going on that are like known issues. Amazon apparently working on patches and hot fixes. You, you know they're coming. They've actually disabled one of the soul trials, so one of the main like story quests you literally just can't do it because it's not working. Hey, by the way, at some point they're actually going to make it so that the EU PTR is visible so you can delete your characters. I need to be doing that. Not really relevant to this video, but I just wanted to talk about it. If you're having any issues though, do make sure you check this. It makes sense. If you're having issues logging into the game and you're not short of money and you're happy to transfer off and then transfer back, sort of wish they would give us a free transfer. One thing that you want to pay attention to is that right now, the cooldown is not 30 days for a transfer. The cooldown is actually 24 hours. So if you are like a normal working person, you can only play in the evening or something like that. You could basically transfer off in the morning before you go to work or something like that when the queues are actually sort of like manageable. And then in the evening, you go to one of the many new servers that they've launched and you just play normally. Cost you about 12 quid, $15, I'm not 100% sure what that is. And then when all the servers have like died down, they'll probably merge you back quite quickly. But if they don't, you can just transfer it back. Just something worth noting if you're really struggling to play right now. Because the game is popping right now. I'm very much aware that this was a very long video. Just a lot of things going on. And I wanted to sort of come at this from maybe a position where you might not be overly familiar with, with everything about New World. So I sort of vaguely explained what a chess fun was. If you already know, then just get doing them. Or you don't, you don't need me to tell you, you know. There's a lot of people coming back though who may not be familiar with everything everything that I've spoke about. If you have any questions, do let me know in the comments below or come and watch me over on Twitch, which would be a great time for me to put that up. I'm streaming every day right now, so I'm pretty much going to be live. I'm doing like 12 hours, so if you can't watch me, though, there's other creators out there that I'm sure you'll find. And of course, thanks to my Patreons, that is the best way to support me. There's people I need to add here, but I've been so chocked that I haven't actually done it. Many apologies, but much love to you guys. Thank you very much. What I hope you do, though, is have a most beautiful, beautiful day. Like and subscribe. Goodbye.